Hello, hello. It has been a long, long time. Not, well, maybe not that long, but it has been a while since I've done anything with my channel. And so, here I am. Uh, this is a tutorial video for Escape Room Simulator, uh, the in game editor. Uh, the reason I'm making this video, I'm planning on making more, but the reason I'm making this is because when I started learning Escape Simulator in game, editor um it was very difficult at first because there's not really many tutorial videos out there and the videos that are out there only cover the basics they don't really cover anything too in depth so that's what i'm planning on doing here um and the first thing i'm planning on showing how to make is slidable puzzles and slidable puzzles or puzzles to where let's say there's something on a wall take it slide it up or down and I'm going to show you how to make that. So I'm in my one room here. It's not completed yet, but uh, the slidable puzzle is. So here we have a slidable puzzle. So let me just show you how it should look, at least from what I know. You slide it all over the place. It has five different connecting points. You can slide all of these around in different areas. And if you get the right order for all of them, this light will turn green. Now, I'm going to show you how to make this in uh, the in-game editor. So I'm going to cut to the testing room I have just to show you how to make this. So hello, um, I'm now at my testing room. As you can see, there's just random stuff laying all over the place. And I'm going to show you how to make a slidable, slidable puzzle. So I have just a, a wall panel and a chest piece. You can get any item to be a slotable. It could be a painting, could be plates. I don't know what you do with that, but for this, I'm going to use a chest piece as a lever, as the slotable. So once you have your slotable spawned in and moved into your spot, um, it's not going to be a slotable, obviously. You want to go to behavior right here and set it the slotable which is on the very bottom. Now once we have it as slotable, you're going to notice this appears once you use it. You have to edit end node right here, click it, and then drag this to wherever you want it to slide to. Now let's say you don't want it to slide past this but to the very top. You drag the chess piece up to the top and click confirm. move it up a bit. Now we have this like turquoise blue line and a little circle right here. This is how far it'll slide. So now we have a sliding point. It can go up or down this far. Now let's say you don't want it to just be in the middle. Like I could drag it up here and it'd stay there. Let's say you want it to snap into the nodes. Go to no snapping and click closest. Then it would go to the closest node that's by it. But let's say you want it to be starting node. That would mean no matter how close you are, it's snapped back to the starting node. But we want it to be closest, so it can't just be in the middle. So let's say you want more than just up or down. You want something in the middle. You want to go to additional snap points. Now we already have two snap points, one, two. So let's say you want four snap points in total. You want two additionals. Now you have four. You're always going to start with two. One on the bottom, one on the top, or one on the left, one on the right. You're always going to start with two. So now we have four snapping points, as you can see, four. And let's say, let's go to the extras. Like, let's say you want it to start on the top. You, you select starting node, go from zero all the way to three. And now it starts on the top. And let's say you want it to take longer. Like, let's say if you drag it to one point, it takes a second instead of 0.3 seconds to get there. So now it'll go down much, much slower but we're going to leave that at point 
Now, now we now that we've covered everything here and the slottable section, we want a lock. Like obviously, let's say you want to drag this up here and then trigger a lock. So for that, obviously, I'm already in Logic. You want to go down to the lock, place it down. This is huge, so I'm just going to scale it down. Okay, so you have your lock here, and you have one note. You have a password, let's say two. Two is the number. Now we have one, one slotable and one number. Each slotable needs its own number. So let's say we had two of these in here. It's so we have two, we need two numbers. Just put one. So two numbers, two slotables, all right? Now, obviously, the slotable isn't automatically going to connect itself to the number. We need to do that. So select the slotable, go to locks, click it, and now this slotable, we want it to be connected to the first number, which is a 2. So select the 2, confirm. Now this slotable is connected to this number. We want to do the same to this, so locks, second number, since it's the, since it's the second slotable, confirm. Now this is connected to the 1. Now, how do you change which spot you have to put it in? Well. It actually dictates. It's actually dictated by the number in the lock. So this this is tied to the number two. If you want this to trigger the lock or the number, you want it to slide. You want it to slide into uh, node two, which you would think right here, right? No, it's not going to be this because as you seen as you see in an extras, it starts at zero, which is right here. It starts at zero every time. So the max node that we have is three. Because zero, one, two, three. So this is two. And this is one. Zero, one. So we have these slotables that do trigger a lot. Like we have three. Sorry, two and one. Now the lock is triggered, but we don't see anything because nothing happened. We need to tie it to something. So let me just get a really quick thing. Uh, doesn't really matter what you pick. I'm trying to pick something small so it's not super huge. Oof, that's huge. This chess piece, alright, we have this chess piece. Let's say when this lock has both its numbers, 2 and 1, on on lock, it wants to trigger an animation. So we're going to need to make this an animation. Let me just. I'll show you how to make an animation later on in another video, but we're just going to have a go to the side. So when this lock is triggered, when both numbers are as it should be, on unlock, it triggers this animation. So when it's so when these two slotables are at two and one, the lock triggers an animation. So this will move to the right, as you see here. So let's put it to the test. So we have the lock so we have this node tied to the lock being number two. So one, two. We have this node being tied to the second number, and the second number in the lock is 1, so 1. And that moves over really fast. So that is the basics of making a slottable puzzle. Now obviously, this is not beauty, it's not pretty. If you want to make a good, unique looking wall puzzle, obviously you'd have to do a lot of editing to it, a lot of changes, but now you know how to make the puzzle itself, like the puzzle part of the, of uh, this panel. That's how you make a slotable. Um, obviously, once you have the slotable and its nodes down, you then need to connect it to a number in a lock. This is connected to the number two since it's the first one, you know. 
We could have this also be number one, but that wouldn't make sense. This is connected to second lock because second number because it's the second syllable. Once both numbers are triggered on unlock, this moves to the right. This is my first tutorial for something like this. So I'm sorry if I was hard to understand or if I'm all jumbled up or if I went too fast. I do apologize for that. I tried to be as straightforward as I could. But if you couldn't understand anything or if I missed something, please let me know. I would be happy to help with that. And I would also like to put point out I am not a master at this. I know basics in this, but I am willing to share share what I know out there. So if I'm missing anything or you can't understand something, please ask me. I'll try my best to help. But that was the tutorial for Slottables and Escape Room Simulator in-game editor. I hope you all have a fantastic day.